Hey everyone, Maurice here from Erickson Design and Woodworking. And today's kind of kind of a special day. Over the past couple days, I've been experimenting with different concentrates of this chemically induced stain that you you typically would use on curly maple or some other highly figured uh, species, lighter colored species of wood. And uh, this stuff is kind of unique. We'll kind of walk through the application, how to finish, and uh, some of the end results. I can say, you know, it's it was a it was a fun, you know, experiment, and uh, we'll kind of walk through this together. So to get started, I wanted to make sure I had a whole, you know, assortment of different types of woods, and just to see how this stuff would react to it. So I had some quilted maple, some redwood, uh, some burl maple, walnut, curly maple, and then some uh, some cherry. And I just wanted to test this stuff out. So I had two different iterations that I made in the in my kitchen, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but this is called ferreric nitrate. And some people call it uh, iron nitrate. It's basically the same thing. These are crystals that you mix in with uh, distilled water. There's different types of um, ratios that you can go through um, I ended up kind of going 30 grams per two cups and I kind of scaled that down and then I cut that in half per bottle so um, that the 30 grams would buy two cups to get four fluid ounces um, that was my 100% as far as that concentrate and then I stepped that down to 50 next one was 25 just to see the different reactions that this would go through now this is a, a, a chemical reaction. It's not staining the, uh, the actual wood. Uh, there's a chemical um, reaction that will happen with the type of grain that you put this on. And it's, it's actually pretty amazing and it's really fast, simple, it's very clean. Um, and it doesn't really distort the wood that much. Um, but yeah, so when you apply this stuff, you want to be really liberal with it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I completely saturated each panel. What I really wanted to make sure is I could actually see the difference between the natural wood and then this concentrate. So I went ahead and I wanted to make sure that I taped everything up. I could actually see the lines and the differences between what was stained and what wasn't stained. Um, but again, I was very liberal uh, with this with this solution. This is water-based, so at the end of the day, this is going to kind of raise the grain up. To prep all of this wood, I ended up sanding from 120 to 180 to 220 to 320. And then I water popped in between uh, each each change of the sandpaper. And uh, had a really clean surface, made sure everything was extremely clean. And then I started applying the solution. And uh, again, I really wanted to kind of see the differences on saturation and just to see what chemical reaction would happen uh, once we touch this. So what's nice about this <clears throat> is you basically just leave this to dry for about 20 minutes and then uh, you'll come after uh, it's dry and you'll just use a heat gun and you'll heat up the area and that will induce that reaction with the wood. And this is usually typically the iron nitrate is typically used for very light colored woods. Um, that's why I ended up kind of just including a, a couple darker woods like the walnut and the, uh, the redwood just to see what would happen. And uh, again, it basically just almost emanized it. Um, But I ended up speeding the video up here. You don't really have to see the entire application. What's unique about this though, it, once the wood dries uh, from this in, in the first layer of this, and I only did one layer, um, but it turned it a kind of a pukish, greenish, uh, grayish color. And it was very off-putting. It, it did not look good at all. Um, but once you, it, you know, just put a little bit of heat concentrated heat over it and the reaction happens it completely changes the wood and so what i've noticed uh, a lot of gun stock 
um, woodworkers, they, they use this specifically on curly maple. And some argue that it's probably the best stain for curly maple. That's why I wanted to, to try it on quilted just to see. Quilted has a lot more curl and a lot more crevices, dark areas. The, the big leaf maple burl that I uh, was just putting the, the smaller panel on, um, that has a lot of dark spots, a lot of curl, a lot of figure that's going through the entire, uh, the entirety of that piece. And, uh, hopefully try to get a good reaction. So again, so I let this, I let it dry for about 20 minutes. This is completely dry to the touch. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with a heat gun and I'm going to concentrate a lot of heat to induce this chemical reaction. Um, and then it's going to start turning, you know, a nice reddish color. And you have to use a lot of heat on this to induce that, that reaction. Um, and if you don't use enough heat, you'll, you'll notice that it turns kind of a, a greenish, um, grayish color still. And it, it just doesn't look good. And what I noticed, you know, with the other concentrates, when I bumped it down to like that 25% solution, you know, it really did keep that grayish color. But when I put the stain on and you'll, you'll see it later in the video that it just, it, it was different and uh, it highlighted and it darkened certain areas just subtle enough to you could really see a change in the overall grain um, but again this big leaf maple uh, highly figured a lot of dark spots uh, a lot of curl a lot of sharpness in the grain and i'm hoping i'm really hoping that you know this stain will complement and bring in you know the figure out a little bit more than you know the typical uh, oil that you'll put on it um, without any of this stuff so, but we'll see and you can see the walnut got really dark and uh it just you know it's almost uh ebonized the entire wood um this is curly maple i this is not a quality, you know, board for curly maple. It's very low quality. It just, I did not like it. Um, and this is the redwood. <laughs> and the, uh, the redwood got extremely dark um, very, very fast. And this is old growth uh, curly redwood. It was already dark to begin with. And this is not, that wasn't the typical redwood you would normally see. Um, most have so this that, that stuff is extremely old uh it's very dense the grain structure is really high um and then the cherry you know and later on i was really surprised on the cherry so but again you can just see the you know the the grain turn that reddish color and i wanted to make sure i didn't get it too red because i don't want to turn this into uh redwood um and this ended up turning like an orangish, like an orange brown, um, or like an orange red, deep color that actually did look out and look pretty good. But to do you know all the the uh, the heating and all of that, it didn't take very long. But I mean, it turned right away, and then it's completely dry to the touch and. Um, you can work with it. You can, you can kind of sand the air, uh, the top portions off because again, this is a water-based solution. It's going to raise the grain. So I, I ended up just hitting it with uh, a thousand grit just to kind of take that uh, that grain off. So you can definitely see a difference in between what wasn't stained and what was stained and the percentages for each. And again, that's 100%, 50%, and 25% on each side. And you can really see the differences after the, the heat induced that chemical reaction. And then one would say that, yeah, the redwood is, yeah, I'll never do that to redwood. So that was... Uh, an experiment that I'm just going to sand that off and 
and use that for something else. All right, so since this is all dry, the, the, the reaction already happened. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just put some oil on this and see you know, how exactly what this looks like. Um, I ended up just, I had Rubio uh, run on standby with me. I wanted to do uh, tried and true and kind of do a slower based, more penetrated oil, um, but I just didn't have any on hand. So Rubio was it. And, uh, but again, Rubio is nice and it really does sink into the grain and really pulls it up. And, uh, you can see that, you know, that not a deep red, but in the curl, you can really see that it really darkened the curl and it really highlighted the high points, really darkened the low points. And it kind of, it really brought that figure up, uh, based from the, the original, uh, um, ten of that wood. So I'm going to have to do some more experimenting with this. I think, you know, some applications will call for a different concentrate. Others will be more, others will be less. And, uh, I'll have to keep experimenting with this, but I think this might be a new line of stains that, you know, as a, a new company that I just stood up, um, the, the woodworking company and doing all these videos, I think this might end up on my website as a uh, product that you can go out and buy. Um, or do a little bit of research and there's a whole bunch of things online. You can make this stuff pretty easily. Um, but if you want something that's already been tested and the right tint um, and just a little bit more uh, usage out of it, I think I'm going to go ahead and sell this stuff. So, but we'll see. I was really excited to put this, uh, the oil on, on this big leaf. And I mean, this, this burl is really nice. It's, it's subtle, um, but you can really see that. I mean, it's it's just so deep, and uh, compared to what you know wasn't you know uh, the chemical applied to, um, it is a hundred percent different, and it just really enriched uh, the grain structure and how it looked, and I was really really happy on how this looked, and but again, you can see the differences for um, the 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 quilted maple and the big leaf. They're hundred percent different and this chemical just kind of reacts just a little bit differently for each type of wood species. And, uh, so there'll have to be a lot of experiments before I actually put this on the market. But, uh, I'm really, really liking the, uh, the result on this. I think the percentages that I have and how I mixed it, I think they're really, really close, but, uh, I'll do some more testing and, uh, We'll see where we can go with it. Now, usually every, every video I try to do a plug, I'm going to, again, I'm going to do a plug for Deadwood Sawmill. I get all of this wood directly from him. He's, he's on the Northwest, um, side of the uh, country super awesome guy. I'll put his link to his, uh, Facebook, his website, uh, in the description of the video in there. I have a whole bunch of other links for different types of tools and stuff. Definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, uh, super awesome guy, probably the best wood I've ever, you know, had a chance to come uh, across from and the, and the prices are, are spot on for what they are. So, um, definitely check them out. Now I was quite surprised on this one. And so the cherry actually turned out really good. Not the, the 50% and the 25%, but that hundred percent where I'm, uh, where I'm wiping all the oil off right now, that was a deep cherry red. It looked like it's been weathered for years. 
I was very, very surprised and I was very happy with how that turned out. So I think <coughs> specifically for that wood species, I'm going to play around with that a little bit more, but I was extremely happy with how that turned out. But again, the redwood, absolutely not. I completely ruined this board, um, which is fine. The, the, I'm going to shave all this off. This is not to go to waste. Um, you know, that solution doesn't penetrate that deep. So if you have to, you, you can sand this off. Now, what I ended up doing, just to see how dark I could get it, I went a, another 50% up from the 150 or the 100%. So I ended up going 150 for my mixture. And uh, it really started to turn it red. And then those dark spots really got dark. So some people like that look. What I'm trying not to do is turning this into redwood or it looks, you know, like redwood. You know, quilted maple is so beautiful that, you know, you just need to highlight what needs to be highlighted and darken what needs to be darkened without changing the overall structure and how it, you know, it really, really looks. To me, that looks like redwood and that's just, it, that's not the intent of what I'm trying to get after. Again, super happy with the results. Everything turned out really, really good. And uh, I'll keep playing around with it and I'll, I'll get my percentages correct and uh, try to get something that really pays uh, homage and really complements the wood. All right, guys. Well, hey, this kind of wraps up the video. I really appreciate everyone. If you haven't yet, please, please like, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I have a lot more content coming down the pipeline. I have some really cool products that I'm going to bring uh, uh, forward here in the next couple months. This is going to be one of them for sure. I really, really liked uh, the end results that I got with the, with this type of solution and, um, from the application to, you know, prepping and doing all of those things was extremely easy. Usually standing is just, it's painful. It gets everywhere. This stuff is really, really user-friendly. It's really hard to mess up. And uh, I really enjoyed, you know, experimenting with this and, you know, seeing the different results. And uh, I could see this being a really cool product. Um, but again, you don't you don't have to, you know, purchase this online. You can uh, do a little bit of research. There's a whole laundry list of uh, different woodworking forums out there that that go specifically on how to do this. Um, but again, it's it's quality of wood that you put it on. And uh, it really does enhance it. And usually with this type of wood, you don't want to put anything on it because you, you really don't have to. But some of these subtle little things can really, really enhance it. And uh, I hope that's what this does. Uh, but again, I appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.